New submarines for Canada. This is the Grey White North Report. So I've been doing some research, as requested by one of my subscribers, asking about the new submarines for Canada, and I haven't come across anything really concrete. Just that um, the Royal Canadian Navy is pushing for up to 12 new submarines for the Canadian military at an estimated cost of 60 billion dollars. That'll probably go up to 100 billion by the time it's completed. Apparently, the Navy wants this acquisition to be considered part as part of the ongoing defense policy update. The procurement line could take more than 15 years, per, perhaps even exceed 25 years, according to this author's sources. So we're looking at 2038 to 2048, which is way too long. But if we don't start now, it's going to take, it'll go up to 2048. Right now, there's no indication that the acquisition be approved in principle by the government. Ottawa might insist that the submarines be manufactured in Canada. And that'll take even longer if we do that. We just don't have anyone who can build submarines in Canada at this point. Babcock Canada, a world leader in submarine support, has signed a technical cooperation agreement with Hyundai Heavy Industries to collaborate on the Canadian Patrol submarine project. But this is not new submarines. This is just fixing the old ones. Now, the... CPSP was established by the Canadian Department of National Defense to research procurement options for Canada's next generation submarines. Hyundai, they do build submarines in, in South Korea, so we could be buying South Korean made submarines. Babcock itself is an expert in maintaining, modifying, and extending the life of in service submarines, supporting Canadian, UK, UK, and Australian navies. So Hyundai wants to leverage its world-class construction capabilities while Babcock will contribute its expertise. This, so are they going to collaborate in building a new submarine? Not really sure. So another article I found saying Canada, Canadian Navy makes plans to replace aging Victoria-class subs. Again, it's expected to cost in the range of $44 billion to $73 billion. So $60 to $100 is what I, th was what I saw elsewhere. Because our Victoria-class submarines are scheduled to be retired in the mid 2030s and we need a replacement hopefully before then but probably soon after because the liberals went cheap on the victoria class we could have had something newer in the water already the replacement process is already running behind schedule no surprise there considering that it could take at least 15 years to design and build new vessels my advice is just buy the damn thing abroad buy newer designs not hand-me-downs and we can have them in less time the federal government has yet to commit funding for the submarines and the priority is to have submarines acquisitions, including the upcoming defense policy update, because the last one was released in 2017. We need things across the board, not just with our Navy, but also with our Air Force and Army. So currently, our, with the 2017 def defense project, we're still going to maintain our Victoria-class submarines, but the sustainment cost is approximately $325 million per year. And it's going to cost 1.1 1 .1 to 4.99 billion to modernize the four existing submarines. There's a period where none of our submarines were in the water, and one of them has not been in the water for five years. They had a fire, the Corner Brook, and it had to be completely, almost completely rebuilt. So it's not exactly cheap to keep these in. What we thought we were getting a cheap deal turned out to be a nightmare, and we need to replace them. What can we replace them with? Like, seriously, like, even drug dealers have narco subs, which are not really true submarines, but they're definitely <clears throat> boats designed to sit low on the water and evade detection. If they can build that, if, if drug dealers can get a hold of that, why can't we get a hold of a sub? No, we should have some of these. They're good for, for coastal patrol and for bringing in supplies to <clears throat> special special forces units on a coastline or river estuaries. Turkey is, de is designing mini sub killer mini subs designed for global export. Attack subs that can balance Rush Russian boats in position and care as a low cost supplier of NATO standard equipment. It's a smaller boat, doesn't take as much crew or supplies, doesn't dive very deep. So it's, it's perfect for coastal waters. You know, it'd be a start. I'm not saying we need a big fleet of these. It has a range of 3,500 3, nautical miles. So that is something to look into. 
It doesn't go as deep as I'd want, but it is a smaller option. At this time, nuclear sums are pretty much unthinkable in Canada. All the woke mob and the environmentalists would come out of the woodwork and against that. But if a Cold War with China heats up, it might become a necessity. Because let's face it, we're not exactly prepared for anything at this point in time. And if there was a serious conflict with China at this point, which has been upgrading their navy to the point where they have the biggest navy, though most of it's a coastal navy, they're trying to push into a deep water navy. We are not prepared for that. <clears throat> the Australians are trying to prepare for it. The United States is prepared for it. And again, we're leaning on the United States. For all that we say we hate Americans, we owe most of our defense to them. And this is something that's been talked about before. We've had submarine designs. The problem is we take so long to decide on something, our government does, that it just takes too long. So hopefully with the next military review coming up, the submarines will be on the table and we'll start. We shouldn't build them here. We should develop the capabilities to build submarines here for export worldwide. But we really need replacements that are not like the Victoria class. Something newer. And we should also look at the smaller designs. So any Canadians let me know what you guys think about the plans to buy new Canadian submarines. Is it a good idea? Is 12 enough or is it too much? I personally in favor of having 12. Four on the, on the Pacific, four on the Atlantic, and four up in the Arctic. Because it's better to have early warning and to f fight far out than it is to fight at home. But anyway, Canadians out there, let me know what you guys think. Leave comments in the comment section. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, this has been the Great White North Report. I'm in love.